find yourself a, a space to work. In my case, I'm using the kitchen at the moment. I've got a piece of paper where I've drawn out some of my uh, color circle information very lightly. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to show up on the paper here, but first the description. Uh, in this case, I want you to take uh, three tubes of paint. Um, you're going to take your uh, is it primary red, primary blue, and primary yellow. Um, can't remember exactly what the washes are giving us, but um, usually you want a, a, a cyan, a yellow, and a, and a magenta for this or, uh, exercise. So what I do is instead of uh, taking the gouache, um, and yeah, so it, let's go materials. So we'll take three paints. You're gonna take a cyan, cyan, yellow and a magenta, or a primary blue, yellow and a primary red. Um, you're gonna take a, a surface to color mix on. Um, in this case here, it's a 1095 uh, dish from a uh, restaurant. Um, you can also use this fancy here uh, mixing palette. But just trying to give you a sense that, um, you know, you can use anything you want. Just be careful, there's little holes here so it's gonna leak out. So normally you would, oh, and you have brushes. I like to have uh, multiple brushes use at once. Okay. And uh, so I got three, three brushes, one for each color, because I like to keep the color separate that way as much as possible. Then you also need some um, paper towel, All right? So, so you got your paper to work on, you got a paper towel, you got a mixing surface, and you got your paints, and you got some water. So you got, you know, usually I'll try and take two kind of cups of water. Um, the larger, the better. Pickle jar, because um, it dilutes the dirty water. And I'll actually kind of do the larger one, I'll put the dirty water in, and then I actually go to the clean water to even get a, a, even more dilution. Yep. And my son here has got these little eyedroppers. I think these things are often really helpful. Um, you don't have to use them, but uh, if you have, have them, by all means. Hey buddy, actually, can you put your water down here? Do you want to keep those ones from getting too wet too fast? Water is not watercolor paper, so it buckles really easy. It gets all wavy. So when you get a lot of water on there, it kind of goes blue, 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 blue. All right, so we take a dish, keep an eye on this uh, hole. Let's try not to get the get the paint over there because it'll go out and, oh my God, colors. So usually you'll take um, a little bit of this color, kind of pull it out, right. doing just a little bit. Yeah, you're gonna do it. So for, 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 oops, sorry. before you start putting the paint in here, because then it tends to kind of get up inside these bristles. This is an old beat up brush too though, is you want to actually get the bristles wet so that there's clean water up there. So that when the water sucks up with the capillary action, that there's clean water up here, not paint. So this is more important for if you're working with acrylic than uh, gouache, but there are gouaches that are acrylic, like they dry and then they, they don't dissolve in water again. Um, and that's important to keep your good brushes sort of clean so it's really hard to get the uh, paint out of this sort of upper part once it gets in there. Ooh, we got some beautiful colors here. So so we take a little, now we got that, and then you kind of add water to it, right? So you can either take water with a clean brush, kind of drip it on there, or as he's doing there with this little dropper, it's kind of helpful. Um, but it's, it's helpful to be able to sort of modulate a little bit. And then you're, you're mixing it basically up. Okay, don't add too much water. Yeah, just over on the side. Till it's sort of like a cream, right? And you know, like all things, you know, sometimes people want it a little more wet, sometimes they want it a little more dry, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing it over on top of something, usually more dry, because otherwise it activates the stuff underneath. Uh, if you're trying to do a wash or have some transparency at all, you want it thinner. So we can like put that on there. And you can kind of see, yeah, I think you can see that, right? A line, and then see how, how opaque it is. Oop, and it doesn't want to sit on the line. 
that kind of covers it up. So that, that's a pretty good kind of thickness. And you can sort of experiment, like I said, you know, don't put too much paint out at first as you're getting used to mixing it, because it's it's kind of building your sort of understanding of the of the proportions, of the ratios of water and paint, right? So what I'll do is once I kind of get used to the color that I like, I will pre-mix some some bottles up of it at that sort of mixed up stage so that it's easier to sort of dispense, right? As I as I want to use it. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to actually use this fancy palette. Can I put this one right here? Always add more that's the nice thing this way it sort of keeps you from uh, wasting paint um, if you don't put too much out and then have to wash just wash it down the drain okay so um, hold on first is we're gonna we got our two color circles and since we're working on them just sort of working on them together okay we got some blue okay so that cyan is gonna go right here in this circle can you fill in that circle right here So I usually will wipe the brush before I put it in the water and then put it through the two things and then sort of wipe it off one last time, you know, and you don't even have to get totally perfect, but it's just like, as long as you eliminate most of the colors, you're usually okay. Yellow is a little touchy because it's so sensitive, right? So, um, that one's a little bit different. As you can see here, this color is actually mixed up a little too watery for what I like, but it'll work in this. My color, mixing colors are already, my waters are pretty, pretty dirty already because of, um, you know, the colors have gone in there. So most of this clean water one was the, the car. So I'm going to replace that water. Yeah, that's dirty water. So we're back. I gave him some new color to work with and he just made the blue all green. Um, cleaned our water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just one leg of these two color triangles to kind of try and give you a sense of the difference, right? So one of these is um, the pigment mix, which is the simplest one. So we can just go with that one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try to keep it everywhere, right? Right, 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 right,
Okay, we're gonna focus on one side of this color color chart. It's a triangle in this case, just because it's a simple sort of line. And the first one is the, the pigment mix, so it's it's half and half. So um, you know, generally you want to mix these things so that their um, concentrations are roughly similar. yellow here and it's like three drops ten drops and one drop right so don't please don't put water there yeah. mix it up um Driving around all crazy. Okay, so now we're gonna take clean that one out as well as we can and take in the blue. So, what I'm doing is I'm sort of pushing it against um, the, the palette against the other side. Right, so, so, I'm trying to get any equivalent amounts. So, it's like kind of fill it up, drag it across. That's one, so this one's ten. Over here, it's one, this one's three, one, two, three, and this one's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so we got ten blue, one yellow, three blue, three yellow, one blue, ten yellow. I'm gonna uh, wash out this brush again, and so. Depending on the pigment strength, um, we may not even see much, right? So, uh, mix this up. And, alright. Right over here. So, go up. Can you keep it on this side of the line? Right. Green, right? That's green. Like a turquoise almost. see sort of <clears throat> the range of colors that we're getting from this and you know this is still fairly green compared to that it only has one drop of yellow and uh, ten drops of 
blue. One drop of blue, yeah. Green, Ten drops of yellow. Green, green, yellow. Like so to make something even more yellow, you know, you may have to do 20, 20 to one, 30 to one, right? It kind of depends on how strong the pigments are and how easily they, they, they change other colors. So I'm gonna try and do this, this one here in the middle here, which is more tricky, right? And this is sort of trying to create a visual mix between the two. So oftentimes I can take this sort of existing one and sort of say, hey, does this look more green or more yellow? All right, kids in bed. Um, <clears throat> A little loss. So right now we're going to do this sort of visual mixing and looking at this right now it actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't know if we lucked out or what. Um, you know. But the way you'd sort of still go about it um, is we sort of mix up some green right so we go through the same process and hopefully this is a little bit better visual of everything going on here. Um, you mixing here? No. So this time I'm actually going to take uh, these little droppers just because I have them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do one, two, three, oops, one, two, three. That wasn't very accurate, but Okay. I said you can just take the two brushes and just find a place to sort of scrape it in there. So just kind of put them in and looking at it right now. Um, do, 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 do. All right, we're gonna take another piece of paper. swatches out of it. So, sort of just like kind of put it on the edge there. And you can see sort of it goes right up to the edge. <clears throat> and that allows you... So the thing about these things is, is the color also changes as it dries. It tends to get lighter. Um, sort of uh, when the pigment is, is wet, it tends to sort of um, reflect, like be more saturated, sort of deeper. You can kind of see how the colors sometimes. Oh god. End up looking sort of deeper on these things um, with some water. Uh, so, sort of letting this thing dry. Sometimes people have a, a hair dryer or a fan nearby. Give it, you know, give it a little bit of time to dry. And then you can sort of take this over and sort of see if it sort of feels equally between sort of uh, the yellow and the blue. And this is sort of a, a, a sort of an intuitive thing, right? And, you know, you could, you know, at some point we'll go in and actually do sort of the, the visual droppers and sort of try and get a sense of how well we did. Um, but accuracy isn't so important as much as not just doing any old thing and calling it a day. Um, much better to sort of just give yourself some time to actually sort of make some mixtures and start seeing how they're different. Because it's it's not just about sort of the mixing that we sort of did the last time where you sort of dealing with the, the, the pigment <coughs> mixtures and the power of the, the pigments, <coughs> some, you know, varying powers. Um, you know, all the sort of this elements of the gouache, but, but the color itself and, and sort of seeing looking at color in a way that you don't normally look at it in your life because, um, you know, normally you're not doing things like this, right? So you're trying to get an experience that then informs the way you see. So I just sort of added some dots over here and I'm gonna sort of just like take the amount that I have on here and just kind of mix it and then kind of work my way over, right?
So, so this one I didn't mix quite enough, and it's, as you can see here, it's a little streaky. That's not great. So this one too, sometimes it settles out. So right now the problem is, is it, I've only mixed it on the front of the brush and the back of the brush. So you get that sort of, um, like a fade almost. So it's, it's actually kind of a neat effect that, um, like flower painters sometimes use. But I mean, for this, it would have been better if I had, uh, kept it maybe. So either, either I mixed it better or just sort of using sort of the tip of the brush so that it's only getting the paint from the top, that tip. All right. But this kind of gives us a quick sort of look of how that yellow looks, you know, if, as, as the mixture sort of increases in, in yellowness, right? And I'm just going to do the same, same little thing. Uh, what did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I do six little drops. Um, I'm going to do it on my beautiful little canvas thing here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And, you know, some of these are actually bigger than others. Um, take the, the brush and run it through one water, second water, kind of dry it off. Um, part of drying it off too is, is, is one way to sort of add sort of like, uh, what is it called? Make, make the, the paint you have more watery and in addition make it sort of more transparent because it's like spreading over less pigment over the same area. Um, because it's, it's uh, I can't think of the word at the moment, dispersed, it's comes to me. Anyway, so um, if you if you take the brush and it's still full of water and you add it to here, uh, dilute. There we go. You're gonna dilute it. Um, so I'm gonna take the, the green, after I sort of ex off, take it off the excess water and just sort of start on this end. So green, and I'm just gonna go the other direction because this was a 50% one. even color. It makes the, the color identifying or, or vi vi visuals easier to sort of interpret. Um, very unaccustomed talking while, while working here. You know, it's something I've talked while making art since uh, early college days. Um, usually listening to music or something. So here we have some, some swatches and they'll be sort of shifting in color as they dry. You also see there's some shift. Well actually it's probably because um, that area is still wet. Um, I think it'll become more uniform. But, you know, you might get some <clears throat> variance in color because either I did, didn't mix enough or actually some areas are thinner than others. Um, I want to see how this sort of comes out. Then you can kind of, kind of get a sense of, like, comparison of, of, you know, is this seem more yellow? Yeah, it does. It's like, does this seem more yellow? Uh, no, that's pretty good. Right? And so in some ways, I think this is the 50-50 mix I mixed this time. And this one looks to me too blue. Right, this was closer to this than this. So somehow we just lucked out, kind of got this nice 50-50 um, one right there. Um, you know, that one's greener. So if I was looking at all these colors here, the sort of the one that felt like the most in the middle, um, yeah, it does feel pretty much like this one. I'll try to take a better picture and upload that. Um, and then you start thinking about, all right, so what, what do we do here? I'm waiting for these things to dry a little bit to make sure. Wash that brush out. So then what we would take is, it was the first one over, so it's this color. Um, I think I've got a little bit left over. It might be helpful to have more on there. And I can sort of, right? Fill that in as sort of the 50%. The it feels like pretty equal, like it's, it doesn't feel more blue or more yellow than the other one, right? And, and this experience is gonna be slightly different on each color. Yellow just is such a strange one. Um, so it's one of the reasons I kind of picked it, just so you, if you felt it wasn't sort of feeling the same as these colors, um, that, that's, that's normal. Um, and, and the idea is sort of just sort of have this experience, right? Not so much that it's, it's perfect, right? But just that you've sort of, you've seen these things and you're sort of, you're sort of registering in your, in your head what sort of that, that predicted color is, right? And that sense of color and then sort of like matching it up with, with what you're able to sort of create with pigments, right? And then sort of we're thinking about sort of trying to create a color that's sort of like halfway in between these two colors that feels literally like, like a perfect mix between the two and I'm comparing it to the yellow colors, which doesn't make any sense. So I'll move up to here, just gonna have the paper here. So it's like equally, like the jump between here and here feels equal to the jump here and there. No, because this is closer. 
so this needs to be farther away, so maybe... And this is where the, the dark green kind of messes this up, but that's kind of a big jump. But that still feels maybe a little bit big. So I'm going to sort of take this um, lightest color here, and I'm just going to give myself some more yellow, and kind of just push it a little bit further, right? Um, like I said, with, with the yellows, it really doesn't take much to sort of influence that color. Right, so I'm just gonna keep going with this paper. Boom, that's pretty yellow, right? That's very close to that yellow. That's kind of a big jump, so maybe just a tiny bit more. Dun, 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 dun. God, I'm so curious how I'm gonna edit this thing. All right, here we go. Maybe, kind of a big jump. Okay, maybe a little bit more green. You know, it may end up being like this side here, but you know, if you go too far and then you come back to the same place, it's not that you waste your time, you're actually, that experience is really sort of helpful. Um, if I was doing this uh, on an everyday level, then that sort of experience, that knowledge would be so much more um, immediate, right? But I haven't actually mixed paint in some, some time. Um, I kind of feel like this is pretty good. So. Um, I should have given it a little bit more time to dry, and actually now that I'm looking at it, maybe this color was better, but we'll see when it dries. So I'm kind of curious if, if those, it does look more yellow than the one that's here. Pretty subtly though, um, especially under this light, this kitchen light is pretty horrible. It was better in the day, um, so I may shoot this again under better light, um, or we'll bring in another light into here. So they'll just do the sort of the same thing over here, looking at these colors, sort of just kind of get a sense of something that kind of feels in between. You know, feels like that's a big jump to blue. Yeah, that feels more on the blue side. It feels kind of too green. I don't know why I just went to that one. It's kind of a big jump. Green, big jump. Maybe actually this one. Let's try that. So the fifty percent. So value is kind of a big one here. Um, it's kind of a big jump in value there, uh, dark to light, and then this is it seems even darker than the, the blue, which is uh, I don't know, say unexpected. So you know, some people just naturally are kind of good at this. Yeah, coming back to this one again. Yeah, I kind of feel like maybe in between these two right here. I'm gonna go, so... I actually have the old mixture still, so that was the end. It was the beginning, so it was kind of in between these two. So, we can kind of start by just mixing those two together. Y'all really needed that sound effect. Just kind of checking. And it's kind of... close and then so you know as you run out of paint then it sort of thins it out and then as the, this sort of medium sort of lets more of the paper through then that makes it lighter changes the color um, so I think I just scooped that out but I probably should have mixed a little extra color in there um, good and then we sort of check as this thing dries um, make sure it still seems pretty good to what we have then we can kind of compare to, to this one now looking at this one, you know, this one seems like it maybe could have gone a little more green. Um, and we'll see how we did. Uh, I'm gonna try and do the same um, with the red red to magenta to, to cyan, because it's a little bit more straightforward, um, just to kind of give you a sense too of how you kind of sort of just go about moving from one to the other. You know, you kind of wash your brushes, clean out the water. Um, I'm gonna sort of take a rag and sort of just like wipe out AKA smear this paint because I'm going to use that surface again for some mixing. Do -do -do. Oops. Right. Gonna clean that off and wipe this beautiful mixing tray. You know, the nice thing about uh, a tray like this 
is you could get a bunch of them stacked. I mean, they're made to stack and take up as little space as possible. So you, you know, put a little piece of tape on the back side of that and you won't have that problem. Um, stack a bunch of these and you got a bunch of mixing trays, a bunch of mixing surfaces. Um, it's actually, you know, pretty nice. Um, seeing the color, uh, you know, if it was a black tray, I had the other side of this, doesn't really work so well because the colors, you're looking at the colors on a black surface, much different than a color on a white surface. So by placing this on top of the white surface, you're basically getting the same color. You know, it's, it's closer than the white of this fancy, uh, what's it called? Closing palette, whatever. Multi-well palette. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, you think that the plastic they use on this stuff, it would be sort of stain resistant. Maybe it is stain resistant, but you know, you, I've washed some of these things, like just soaked them in like bleach and everything, trying to make them bright white again does not get back to there, you know? But something like this usually cleans up pretty good. Dinner plates kind of clean up pretty good. Um, ceramics, so ceramics, I don't know. That's when you go, nice, uh, yeah, big ceramic. Ceramic you have to get like studio and you don't have to move stuff around, and worry about breaking it. Um, one guy even suggests doing these big glass palettes. Um, I mean, glass works really well for oil paint. I haven't really tried it for um, watercolor gouache. Okay, and I forgot to change the water. Clean brushes, clean water. You know, I'm use this as the sort of the, the, the initial one, sort of wipe off the paint. I kind of try and put it next to the water to remind me, because you forget to do it. And then try and have one that's a little bit cleaner. Um, sort of dab up anything that you need to. Okay, so. Magenta blue. So we're going to start with just, you know, somewhat equal amounts of of the cyan of the So what are we doing here? Look, I'm gonna just do it on this guy. Um, and starting in this corner, I'm gonna do one, two, three. One, two, three. Because I'm gonna sort of go in the directions. Running actually a little already. One, oops, that was two drops. Kind of trying to put some equal steps. Uh, and I didn't do a, a magenta one. So, so we're dropping in one, two, three, which is equal amount. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Too close there. All right. Um, I didn't actually do this one yet, so kind of mixed up two areas, not only sort of because it kind of goes that way, but because I, I need a little extra to do the this one. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm skipping ahead because I feel like this this is self, self-explanatory, right? Um, this one's the one that's a little bit trickier, but it's, it's helpful to have these to sort of do this one, right? There's a reason. So I'm mixing that one up, mixing this one up, and these might actually be different because even though it's droppers, it, um, you know, it's not that accurate. Especially with these small quantities. I mean, if you're dealing with large quantities, maybe. Okay, I usually, I just sort of like pull out some extra paint. Um, so I go straight ahead and put some there. Dang, that dark, dark purple. Right, and if you, um, kind of do this nicely, a oh, nice piece of paper, kind of clean. Um, you know, maybe even like one and one, you can use this as, as a reference for um, painting further. And, and usually people that take this seriously and really do this, they do that. They, they, if they get a new tube of paint, they mix up a bunch of things and then they, they put that somewhere they see because um, it helps them um, build that understanding that they're able to sort of make future predictions from instead of just having to sort of guess really. Because I mean, pigments actually act very strangely and, and we'll try and go into that a little bit. Um, but it, it, you know, it's it's not like a slider in in the digital realm. All right. So, nice thing about a piece of paper, no, 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 is oh, 
yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna quite do the, the middle one yet because we don't know what's the middle. But I'm gonna take this little section here and we got the two other corners. You know, you can sort of tear the paper or cut it. Um, again, if you wanna put them on sort of the paper here and then just like cut them in half, the swatches, that works too. So anyway, I got this, this kind of middle assumption. We'll see. Add some more blue to it. Hopefully that makes that good. And it's so dark in here. And these pigments are so dark that I'm not sure if I'm gonna even be able to see this difference very well. You know, having good lighting really makes a difference. Alright. And voila. Okay, so now we wipe that off. And then go off one, go on two, and then sort of dab off that. Go down the other side. So the nice thing about this is it's sort of it's letting these guys dry while you're sort of doing the next steps, so that sort of by the time you're done with this, this is, you know, more or less where you want it to be. I'm gonna use that time well. Try to mix this in better. No streaky streaks. No streaky streaks. All right. Okay. Oh my God! Is this all gonna be blurry or something? Maybe. Be very sad. Sounds terrible, probably. We'll see. I definitely do not do live casting for a living, or have ever done it. Ever. It's the first one. Alright. Not really seeing huge changes there compared to the first one. Oh, one to the other. Alright, so, so what I'm going to do is. I guess I wipe this off. Pretty it over. Alright, so we gotta give, give this one a little bit of a second because it's so dark. You really want to give it a second to sort of reach that lightness. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, really, maybe I should just, like leave this and start mixing the next one over here. I mean, it's probably a good idea. I don't think that'd be a smart way to do it. I can just fold this paper, right? Use the back side. Or I can just use the back side, right? But then I'm gonna wipe this all over my shorts because that's the kind of mistake I would make. And if I put this over here, then it's gonna. Yeah. Just gonna give it a second because I can cut that out. Um, and I'm gonna pause and come back. 